Hello and welcome to this presentation on Photoshop.com Mobile. My name is Terry White and I thought I'd take a quick break away from the Creative Suite apps on the desktop and talk about Photoshop in a more mobile form factor. Now of course uh, Photoshop is an industry standard leading photo manipulation and photographic tool and you know we just can't put all of that power in a mobile app so we took the best features for a mobile user and put them in a free app called Photoshop.com Mobile, which is on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Now, although it is on the iPod Touch, of course the iPod Touch doesn't currently have a built-in camera, so you won't be able to use the take, a, take photo um, option, which of course activates the built-in camera. However, you will be able to edit and upload and do all the other features that I'm gonna talk about um, and take advantage of your galleries that are already on Photoshop.com uh, if you do have a touch. So I'm on an iPhone 3GS and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and say select a photo. And of course it will bring up my camera roll as well as any other albums that I have on my iPhone. So I'm just going to scroll over here to one of the, one of the landscape shots I took um, earlier this year in Page, Arizona. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this first one. And it will go ahead and load that image up in the interface. Now, here's where you have all your controls at the top. You have a cancel button, an undo, a redo, and a save and upload button as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through some of these. My favorite tool that I probably use the most is the crop feature. Now the crop feature allows me to just use a rule of thirds. It can go ahead and adjust this and crop it any way I want. But a lot of times when I'm taking photos, especially with the built-in camera on the iPhone, there may be a specific spot that I want to crop into and just go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the crop and it will, um, of course, go ahead and perform that crop. And again, I still have the undo feature if I need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit that crop button again because there are other features there. There's a rotate feature and a flip feature. The rotate feature is kind of cool because when you tap it, it doesn't look like it did anything. Well, now it's waiting for your interaction with this thing called your finger. So I can now rotate the photo any way that I want, and it's kind of fluid, kind of cool. And I just love that, just like it is on Photoshop CS4. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to cancel out of that because I didn't really need to rotate. And the same thing with flip. First time I hit this, I was like, well, did it flip it? Didn't, it looks the same. And again, it's just waiting for me to swipe the photo to flip it either way based on my finger control. So pretty cool to flip the photo over just by using your finger. So that was the crop, rotate, and flip. Now let's head over to some of the more standard adjustments that I use on photos also, exposure, saturation, tint, and black and white. Now exposure, of course, is exposure. And of course, it's now saying, um, I'm in exposure mode, what do you wanna do? And this is pretty cool, you just take your finger and you swipe the exposure left or right to darken or lighten a photo. So I'm just using my finger and dragging across the image to perform that operation. Once I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and hit the check mark and continue on. Now I'm going to um, go to the next one, which I do use quite a bit, especially on landscapes, not so much on portraits, but definitely on landscapes, and that is saturation. Same thing, I like to have my uh, photos a little bit more saturated uh, for landscapes than typically I produce with a camera. I kind of overdid it there, but you see, the, you see um, just the effect that you can do. I can also desaturate a photo. Maybe if I'm trying to create a more custom tenant or black and white photo. Um, again, this is all with my finger controls. I'm gonna go ahead and escape out of that one. And then we'll go to tint. Same thing, I have the entire spectrum of colors to tint between just by dragging my finger across the photo. This actually makes editing photos on an iPhone kind of fun because it's you know in a mobile form factor with a touch screen and we take complete advantage of that touch screen by letting you drag your finger around to actually make the adjustments. Now we'll go ahead and hit black and white. And again, in this case, there is no uh, adjustment for that. It, just, it did just convert it to a standard black and white. But if you want it more control, you can try the desaturation tip. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, cancel that actually. Let's just undo that and we'll switch it back. And next we'll head over to um, just kind of two special effects here. 
there's the sketch and the soft focus. Sketch is kind of cool because it kind of makes your photo look like a drawing. Now on this, it, it was kind of already, you know, uh, highly um, sharpened and it was, you know, it didn't really show what that effect really does on this photo. But try it on a portrait, try it on a different photo, and you'll see that you, you probably will like the sketch effect for some photos. And we'll just go ahead and cancel out of that. And then we'll go to soft focus. Soft focus, I really like that because it kind of just, again, this would be something I'd do on a portrait more so than a landscape, but it just kind of blends it in, just gives it that soft focus look. Especially on a portrait of a female, you just kind of don't want it to be so hard and sharp. Just hit the soft focus and it will do wonders for that photo. Now we'll head over to some more special effects, and these are like filters. So the vibrant filter, again, if you kind of want that high contrast, or I'm sorry, that high saturated look, then you would hit vibrant. Uh, this is kind of just puts it up in a four up kind of color toned uh, pop feature. And I like this one because it kind of just puts a white border around it pretty quick and easily. Next is the vignette blur. I really love this because it, put, it centers the focus um, on the center of the image, draws your eye in by softly vignetting around the photo. And next we have the um, warm vintage filter. And last but not least, the rainbow filter. Not sure how often I'd use that one, but you get the idea. These are pretty cool to use. Now, once you have one that you like, uh, or one that you've, you've done all your adjustments, I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And now at this point, I'm ready to do one of two things. I can go ahead and hit this um, button down at the bottom right, and I have two choices. I can just save it and exit, and it won't wipe out my original. It will actually save it as a new photo to the camera roll. Or I can save and upload, because remember, this is tied into Photoshop.com. So if I hit save and upload, it will actually um, not only save that photo, but again, begin the upload process to upload it to my Photoshop.com uh, account. Now, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and actually, let's go ahead and cancel that for a minute. I do want to go ahead and save it as a photo for my camera roll as well. All right, so now, speaking of online, let's go ahead and go to online and take a look at Photoshop.com. Now, this is kind of cool because what this allows me to do is access all of my Photoshop.com files without me having to actually have them loaded on my phone. So this is pulling them off the internet. So if I wanted to look at my landscapes portfolio, there they are. And I have the ability to, uh, here, let's go to options. We can refresh. We can share that album. So I can send a link to this album and say, hey, my buddy's right here. And I want you to take a look at this later. So I can go ahead and share that. I can also, of course, click on the photos and pull them up full screen. And I even have the ability to start a slideshow, go to the next photo, and share the photo itself so I can send an email linking to that specific photo if I wanted to. Now, if I do hit the slideshow, it will, of course, after a few seconds, go on to the next photo and continue on with the standard slideshow as you would expect. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back one. There we go. And also we have the option to upload as well. So I can select the photo. Now, if I just want to take a photo that I already have and upload it directly to PhotoshopMobile.com, uh, I can. So here, let me go ahead and grab. Uh, we'll grab one of the Hawaii pictures here. We'll grab some nice lava, and we'll upload that one. I can add a description. I can select an album that that's going to go into. So I'm going to put that in my landscape portfolio, and we'll just go ahead and hit upload. I won't bother typing in a description. And at this point, it is now queued that and is doing the upload as we speak. So I'm going to go ahead and just back out of that because you get the idea. It will uh, continue uploading while the app's running. And then last but not least, we have the settings. And the settings will take me to the about. It will show tips to show me how to use the app. It will uh, let me sign in and sign out of my Adobe or my Photoshop.com account. And that's it. That's pretty much what this app is all about. It is about not only taking uh, your work and allowing you to see it and share it, but it's giving you a free editor built right into the app. So you can edit photos, whether you took them with the camera or photos that were already on your albums in your iPhone. So that's it for this quick view or quick preview 
of the brand new Photoshop.com mobile app for iPhone and iPod Touch. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.